Okay, let's get started. Welcome to Learning to Draw a Rhinoceros, a workshop in celebration of World Rhino Day. Today, we're going to have a slideshow uh, introducing you to rhinos, especially the two species in Africa. And then we're going to do two sketching exercises. Um, so we're going to uh, do a shaded pencil drawing uh, and then some quick uh, drawings of um, the white rhino and gesture sketching as if we're in the field. And so... Um, you can, um, your recommended materials are available at the link below where it says download Rhino image handout. Um, so if you don't already have that, no worries. Um, I will be giving you, um, good quality images while we're doing our step-by-step -step demonstration. But anyway, there's two pages and, uh, any sketching materials you have, uh, pencils, uh, pens, uh, shaded pencils, whatever your favorite medium is. Because again, today is more about observing our species, learning about them than trying to do any beautiful finished sketch. Okay. So um, rhinoceroses belong to the greater taxonomic order called Parasodactyla, which are also known as the odd toed Undulates. And it's a pretty small order. It includes just a couple species of horses, including the zebra, um, the five species of uh, living rhinos, as well as a couple species of tapirs. And so it's a pretty small group. And within that group is the family Rhinocero today. <laughs> um, the ending today um, also always means that that's a family name. And those guys, compared to the other members of the order, they bear horns and they have three toes. So uh, that includes this five species. Now, today we are focusing on the black and the white rhinos of Africa, but previously I've done uh, similar workshops on the greater one horned rhino and the Javan rhino. And uh, so, yeah. And then uh, historically, uh, millions of years ago, up to the Ice Age, there were other species of rhinoceros. And that includes the... Um, the uh, woolly rhino. Here's a little bit of a um, image here. The woolly rhino, and those have actually been found now that we have global climate change and the melting of glaciers. They're being found more and more uh, in um, the uh, northern hemisphere uh, up near the poles. And so those were very large, and those died out during the ice age about 10,000 years ago from um, probably a combination of climate change with the warring climate, uh, as well as hunting. So anyway, the five remaining species are the black and the white rhinos here uh, in Africa, and then the greater warnhorned Sumatran and Javan rhinos, which we won't go into today because <laughs> it's a short workshop. But basically they have various habitats, um, the ones in Asia are a little bit different than the ones here in Africa. Uh, in Africa, they are generally in the plains, what we call the savannas, uh, although the uh, black rhino is a little bit more on the edge uh, into the uh, shrubbery because it has a different diet. So, um, you know, this is World Rhino Day. So I did want to share some facts from the um, State of the Rhino Report that just came out um, from the International Rhino Foundation. And they did say there's a total population estimated about 27,000 um, individuals of all five species. Uh, but unfortunately, tragically, over a thousand are thought to be poached each year um, for their horns and for for trophy hunting. And poaching is on the rise after the COVID lockdown was lifted. So they were a little bit more protected during the lockdown, but there were no tourist dollars during that time to help fund their conservation. So now that things have opened up again, thankfully tourists are returning and that does help to um, uh, protect the species. But um, the um, they've also had a hard time because uh, the conservation organizations um, haven't had as much. Uh, funding. So the black rhino we're focusing on today, their population stands at about 6,100 feet or no, 6,100 individuals. They are listed as critically endangered, but they are slowly recovering, thankfully. 
And um, unfortunately, the country of South Africa, um, they do have the most individuals of both black and right, white rhinos, but an estimated 500 animals will be killed in 2022 just for their horns. And so uh, as you, I hope you know that the horn has no medicinal value, um, but it is highly prized and very expensive. The horn is just made up of keratin, kind of like our fingernails. And so that is a different kind of horn than some of the other animals that live on the African um, plains like the members of the um, bovid family, which we've uh, covered in other workshops. So um, another thing that makes them uh, vulnerable to uh, extinction is their slow reproductive rate. Um, the female uh, has, a, has a gestation or a pregnancy of about 16 months. Can you imagine being pregnant for that long? And then she only has one calf and she nurses that calf for over a year and will keep that calf uh, close to her for several years. So um, that it makes it more difficult to bounce back when their populations decline. So now let's go on to something more fun. We're going to have our first sketching exercise. Who's ready to go on a virtual uh, sketching tour? So as you probably know, you know, when you're sketching in the field, it's a little bit different than sketching from photos at home. So we're going to pretend that we're bouncing along on one of these uh on one of these African safari jeeps, and we're lucky enough to come upon a um, a group of uh, white rhinos. Now, those do tend to be in uh, groups more than the black rhino. Uh, and tell me in the chat box if you've ever seen any of the rhinoceros species we're talking about today. It's probably likely that you've seen them uh, in a zoo like I have. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Okay, so anyway, who's got their uh, binoculars? <laughs> who's got their pretend binoculars and their sketching supplies? Maybe a clipboard and a sketching, um, a sketch, sketching, whatever you want to sketch with. I sketched with pen because often... Yeah, often um, when you're sketching in the field, you don't want to use pencil because the pencils will smear. Of course, we're pretending today, so you can use whatever you want. But I'm using a pen, which is nice because it doesn't smear. And it also helps you to um, not think about erasing. Because if you spend a lot of time erasing your sketches, um, by the time you've made the perfect line, your rhinoceros is way off across the other side of the savanna, right? Okay, so we are going to do quick practice sketches are going to kind of look um, messy and fun like this. But uh, again, I want you to just think about the real goal is for you to understand their anatomy more and also their behavior. Because here you see one is charging us and one is just mellow hanging out on the side. And the other one is kind of turning towards its right. Okay. And so we're just going to go um, quickly as if we're in the field. Okay. And I am just randomly choosing three minutes to be our sketching. Now, that's a long time um, in terms of the real life, but it's a good amount of time to practice uh, quick field sketches. Okay, so we're going to start with the one on the upper left. Then we're going to go to this one and this one. And finally, the one on the lower left. So who's ready? Tell me in the chat box. Are you ready to start sketching with me? So you don't have to have any previous sketching experience. Don't worry about this. Just think about um, observing your, um, your uh, rhino and trying to remember it as best you can. You might never get to see it again. They might run off. And so this might be your only chance to get them in your sketchbook. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Sophia's ready. Let's go. So looking at this one uh, coming right towards us, this white rhino, a big hump on their back, starting with a big square head, some ears. Now you don't have to watch me, but you can always watch the replay to do this again. Doing an oval for the big old body. Then they've got these really heavy stumpy legs. So I just like to get the boxes first and the circles and rectangles. 
Then I'll start drawing a little bit more firmly, always looking at my subject more than my sketch to make sure I'm drawing from observation and not memory or imagination. But at first, I kind of just make it really, really boxy with squares and rectangles and triangles and getting it more realistic as we go. Again, we only have three minutes, especially if this rhino is ambling over towards us to check us out in the safari jeep. So we don't want to hang out for too long. We're looking straight at those horns. So they look kind of short and foreshortened. It's got a second one back behind there. Then they've got their big old nostrils they use for smelling. They don't have very good sight. They've got a wrinkly snout there, nostrils, and that big square lip. This white species, white rhino is also called the square-lipped rhino. They've got these wrinkles on their shoulders and the top of their legs. And that one leg is lifted, walking towards us. And the other leg, you see it comes far in. So it's really muscular at the top. And then it kind of comes in under the body. And then there's a big, fat, strong leg with three toes to help protect, um, to help uh, support their big weight. And then we see their back legs just a little bit in the shadows. So you see, I'm moving. I'm not thinking about this at all. I'm just keeping that pencil moving, continuously looking back and forth at my subject. We see the rhino's uh, jaw and cheek a little bit on our right. So it's not facing directly towards us. It's looking at something a little bit over to its right. A little bit more wrinkles. They don't have um, really any fur on their body. Their skin is several inches thick and really strong. We're almost out of time, so just keep that pencil moving. Get whatever you can before the rhino comes on over to us and uh, wants to sniff our lunches. Okay, we're done. Next rhino, three minutes. This one's really mellow, just looking out over the horizon. Notice that big blocky shape. So we're just noticing that big blocky shape, that big, big hump on the back, which is a muscular hump that supports their big head. So I'm just starting kind of with a big box for the main body. And then it's sort of a area for the head and neck, the ears, These guys have a really long head compared to the black rhino and a bigger hump on the top of their body above their withers. Now I'm drawing the withers and the forelimbs. Big belly, the hind limbs. Keep that pencil moving. Got some bumps on their back of their back bones, their rump, and we see both back legs. One of them is in shadow, a little bit of a tail. A little wrinkly neck, and then those forelimbs again, noticing how they've got a really strong upper limb, and then it kind of arches back. We've got an elbow. Keep going. Long forehead. I could probably make it longer here. I think it's a little short and stubby. Oh, well. But that's what you learn while you're sketching. So remember, don't worry about what your sketch looks like. Think about what you're learning by observing the species. Because drawing really forces you to look at something with a bit more attention than you would if you were just taking a photo of it or looking at it 
with your binoculars. And that longer attention span is what allows you to really understand their anatomy. I'm making that left front foot shorter because it's farther away from us. <laughs> so notice how I just fix things as we go. And we're almost out of time. I'm just darkening the lines I like because he was a little bit inaccurate there. Three toes. We just show, see a couple of those toes, really. Okay, next. Moving on. That one ran away. This one's coming back towards us again. So it's kind of similar to the first one, but he's turned a little bit more to his or her right. So starting with the head and a couple ears. And that head is pretty foreshortened because it's looking towards us. Just keep sketching, Sophia. The more you sketch, the more accurate you'll get and the faster. I really hadn't sketched many rhinos until a couple of years ago when I started teaching these free workshops. And I haven't been to Africa yet, but I plan to if I'm lucky. So the big hump again, the white rhino has a big muscular hump. Coming down towards its shoulder and its neck. And then its belly. So of course, this guy is much shorter than the second one we drew because it's going towards us and the whole body's foreshortened. Now a little box for the two front legs. And that front leg comes in at an angle again, just like the other ones we noticed. Keep those pencils moving. Don't get discouraged. It's the act of drawing. Just like the act of exercising is what gets you in shape. <laughs> you don't get in shape if you don't exercise. So just that, that those pencil miles, as my friend John Muir Laws says, putting in those pencil miles will help you to get better and better. And of course, if I had a half hour to draw this guy or gal, it'd be a lot better. But that's not the concept. We're in the field today. Virtual field trip. And trying to just get as much information as we can about this rhino. We see this um, ear, we can see the inside of this ear, but the rhino's right ear is turned away from us and we don't see that. Notice that. They're in two different positions. A big belly. This is a big, fat, healthy rhino. <laughs> and we see a little bit of the rhino's back leg there. So I'm just going to put that in shadow. Now remember, you're gonna. Um, I'm gonna invite you to share your sketches when we're done, if you want to. So we're gonna do this page of sketches, and then our slower sketch of the black rhino, as well as sharing some more fun facts about rhinos. <laughs> Arthur says, you got a long-legged crocodile. Okay. Okay. Last one. You guys can do this. Look at this guy. This one is facing a little bit different direction. It's a little bit more foreshortened than rhino number two, but longer than rhino number three. So we see a little bit more of the whole body. So I'm just going to start with the back and get in just a big boxy area here. Since it's facing away from us, those back legs are higher on the paper. Got the two horns. The big hump, 
the shoulder, the blocky area for the forelimbs, the big belly, the hip bones, the big muscular rump, and a block for the back legs, which are higher on the paper again, because they're farther away from us. Okay. Okay, so we're noticing again how long this forehead is in the white rhino. Really big, long, heavy head. This one is eating something, but I'm not going to add that. Adding the jaw, that forelimb, again, kind of coming way back and down with the three-toed foot, larger. And we got a negative shape between the two legs. Big wrinkle on the top of the leg. Because that skin is very thick and heavy. Helps protect them from not only insects and scratches from shrubbery, but also from predators like lions. The African lion. Probably about their only predator, except when they're calves. And of course, humans. And this one, we can see the interior of both ears, but the ears are at slightly different angles. Okay, we're just about wrapping up and we're going to move back to our slideshow and then our second drawing demonstration. A little bit more details on the legs. And just press your pen down harder or your pencil with the lines that you like because we're not erasing because this rhino is just about to walk away down the, down the riverbank. Anyway, back to a few more slides, and then we will go back and do our second longer sketch. Okay, so when you're out in the field, you're in your African safari, um, there are many uh, countries where you can see both the black rhino and the white rhino species, um, and many of the national parks, you can see both. So um, what are the characteristics you want to notice to help you correctly identify and accurately sketch them? So we're going to notice the habitat. They have slightly different habitats. Noticing the size and shape of the body, the size of the head and the ears, the number of horns. Although in Africa, we only have um, two horned species. So there are species that have one horn, like the Javan rhino. Um, and that lives in a different continent. So, um, but we do want to know the relative length of those horns. Um, like the front horn compared to the back horn. And then noticing their behavior and habits because different species have different habits. Okay. And um, so when you're sketching something, I always encourage people to observe a skeleton if you can. Maybe you can go to a natural history museum and see a mounted skeleton um, or an image like this on the web. So um, this is uh, the white rhino that we just drew. And so it really helps to understand um, the skeletal structure, which will help you to draw it more accurately. Um, so for example, we saw that giant blocky head uh, we saw those really big withers, right? So much bigger than if a, you were riding a horse. <laughs> on a horse, the withers help hold the saddle on, but these are much more giant than a horse. And then um, we see the angles of the limbs. So noticing they have the same bones that we do. So they've got a shoulder bone. This is their, um, this is their uh, elbow here and then their shoulder here. 
Um, this is their elbow. This is the, um, the wrist and then the toes. And then we've got these big barrel shaped um, belly where all the uh, reproductive and digestive organs are. And then back here, we have the hips or the pelvis. We've got a short tail. And then we've got the two um, rear legs. And again, just like ours, they have the same joints that we do. So they've got the, um, the knee right here and the ankle. Okay. And then the three toes. So as you're looking at the next photographs, try to see those angles, which will help you to draw it more uh, um, accurately. Yes, Sophia says, look at that hump, right? <laughs> and so here's one from behind. Um, so just imagining that skeleton we just saw with that big, those big um, vertical uh, uh, bones that stick up for the withers, the big hips, um, and then the giant barrel belly and the angles of the ankle there <laughs> and the, um, yeah, there we go. Uh, and the wrists. Okay. <laughs> they look like human feet. Well, I don't know about that. They just have three toes and they're super big and strong and blocky, um, compared to other, um, grazing mammals that you might see on the African savanna. Um, you know, like your, uh, well, they're a little bit more like elephants, right? So they have to um, be really strong and, and boxy to support all that weight. So kind of look different, of course, than a nice, beautiful, uh, svelte uh, giraffe or zebra, <laughs> as David Attenborough would say. Okay, so now, um, since we're on safari, we want to compare the two species we might see. And so the two species in Africa are the white rhinoceros and the black rhinoceros. So this is the one we just drew. So, um, so notice that muscular hump on the withers and that supports this giant head. And it also has a lot of muscles on there to help them lift that giant head. All right. And um, they are the largest species um, that is surviving today of the five species, up to 6,000 pounds. Um, and they have, um, you can notice that both species have two horns, but often the white rhino, especially as it um, um, ages, this front horn gets a lot longer relative to the back horn. Whereas in the um, black rhino, the two horns are a lot more equal in length. Now, staying on the head, notice the ears. The white rhino has kind of taller, thinner ears, and the black rhino has shorter, rounder ears. Um, and the white rhino has a longer um, kind of snout and jaw, and the black rhino's head is a little bit shorter and stumpier. Um, yes, Sophia, yes, you said that the white rhino, you can see now each individual is going to be different. And as they age, they get um, a lot bigger, just like with the, um, just like with the elephant. Okay. And, um, so let's see another one here. So, um, now if you get, if you're, um, lucky enough to get close enough or have really good binoculars, you can notice something else that's important. So the black rhinoceros has sort of a pointy lip here. And that pointy lip helps them um, because they have a different way of eating and a different habitat than the white rhino. So they use that pointy lip kind of prehensile, um, sort of like a giraffe uses their lips and their tongue to get leaves. So they're a little bit more like a giraffe in eating more leaves um, and bark and stems and twigs. Okay. So they use that pointy leaf for um, that pointy lip for doing that. Whereas the white rhino, they have a square lip. And here's another um, better um, picture. So here's that really pointy lip of the black rhino. Helps them browse. They are browsers, so they're not grazers. Um, so the white rhino is more of a grazer like a lot of the other uh, mammals on the African safari, like um, zebras. So they've got this big square lip. And in fact, another name for them was the square-lipped rhino.
Another thing you can notice is often the white rhino with that giant um, head and that giant muscular withers, they are normally grazing. So their head position is down towards the grass more. And black rhinos um, are often have their head position up. Okay, great. Thank you, Sophia. Wonderful. So yeah, this one, this white rhino um, is older and has even a longer uh, front horn compared to the other one. Alrighty. So now we're going to move on to the more detailed um, drawing, the more careful drawing. Now that we've really looked at the anatomical structure and understood what they look like from underneath, um, and in their skeleton and all the joints and angles of their bones, right, can really help us. So we're going to draw a more slow, careful drawing. All righty. And so here, um, here is like an example. Looking at those white rhinos, you see how the first thing I was doing was just looking at those basic shapes, blocking those in. And so over here, I have these um, six steps to sketching success, showing an example of a uh, sea lion, but it's the same with any animal, is you first want to start blocking in your basic shapes of circles, squares, and rectangles. And you want to um, think about the negative shapes. So those are the shapes, like the white shape between the legs, okay? And think about what shape those are. Also think about the angles, okay? Think about the flow lines, the relative proportions of each shape, and the alignments or what structures are aligned with others. Okay, so now um, this is the uh, rhino. We're moving on to drawing the black rhino. So again, you notice um, its ears are a little bit shorter and rounder. Both of the um, horns are a little bit more similar in shape. Their uh, head is a little bit shorter um, and they don't have as much of a muscular hump behind their ears. All righty. Um, and if you can see them next to a white rhino in the field, they'd be about half the size. Okay. So anyway, just thinking of blocking in those basic shapes and the proportions, the angles, like here, here's a nice angle. Their jaw and their leg makes this nice, perfect 90 degree angle. Do you see that? And then alignment, noticing what is aligned to other things. Okay. Uh, and then negative shapes. Again, that's the shapes like the white space. And that's why I always get these high resolution images for you that have a white background. I purchased these um, for you. And that's why I encourage you to download the high resolution images since I do buy those for you guys. So anyway, you can see the negative shapes really well here, as opposed to if you're in the African savanna, where um, these species are really quite well uh, camouflaged, um, especially the black rhino that tends to be more <clears throat> at the edges of the savanna than the white rhino and is more kind of in the shrubbery. So that, because that's where it's doing browsing shrubs. <clears throat> and uh, its its posture is more often with its head up because, again, it's kind of like a giraffe in that it browses um, on uh, twigs and leaves and it doesn't graze, okay? So anyway, back to those negative shapes. You can see those negative shapes between the two legs, and that helps to separate the two legs from each other. All righty? Okay, let's see. So are you ready to sketch a black rhinoceros? Again, we're going to get out of this slideshow and um, finish that up um, at the end. And we're going to go on here to starting our black rhino. Now we're going to start this with just um, a pencil. So we're, I'm, I'm just using a um, mechanical pencil uh, that has a very fine point to it so I can move really quickly and it won't smear. And then once we get the outline down, um, I'm moving on to a shading pencil, which can give me <clears throat> some more darker, deeper shadows to round out the fullness of this big, heavy animal. So, so here we are. We're noticing those basic shapes. And so I'm going to um, just outline those for you just to make you look first before we start. Because the longer you look at something before you start sketching, the more accurate you'll be and the quicker you'll be in the field. 
And I always recommend that if you do hope to go um, out in the field and draw your favorite plant or animal, that you um, draw it first practicing at home like we are here so that we can draw it more accurately, more quickly, and more confidently in the field. Okay, so now we're going to just draw the one on the right and the one on the left is going to be your homework. So I'm just blocking in kind of a box where um, my right rhino is. And now I'm just very lightly, I want you to draw lighter than this, okay? I'm just drawing dark here so that you can see this. But I'm just thinking of my rhinoceros as a collection of, of boxy shapes first. So we can just get our foundation, just like the foundation of a house before you build the walls, okay? So it looks pretty funny and cartoony now, but we're going to get it more realistic. So I've got that area blocked in. Alrighty, now we're going to look at the head and you can see I've given you a close up view of the head in case you don't have the downloadable cheat sheet. So we're going to spend some time on that head, noticing how long it is and getting the head first before we add the two horns. Big jaw there, it's very big and strong. kind of that oval of the main face and then the forehead where we're going to add the two ears. We've got one ear facing away from us and it's going to be shorter because it's farther away and turned back away from us. And the other ear is facing us. So we're going to be able to see the interior of the ear. And it's as tall as the, the neck there, you notice. So it's bigger than the other ear and it's going to be shaded inside. Now finishing up that forehead and we're going to continue on to the horns. Remember the, the black rhino has the two horns that are a little bit more similar in length than the white rhino. So that big triangular horn coming down into its forehead. And you know, every individual is going to be different, just like um, any species is. So you don't have to get these exact. But as we add this second horn, notice the triangular negative shape that's between the two horns. And look at that just as much as the shape of the front horn you're drawing. And that will also help you to draw it more accurately. Okay, now I'm just cleaning up a little bit. You can see that I try not to go back and forth too often with um, drawing and erasing because that slows me down. Okay, now we're gonna do the muzzle. So we see it's wrinkly muzzle and we see the animals just a side view of the animal's right nostril, but we see the full view of the animal's left nostril. And notice where it is right below the front horn. And then their mouth and their lip, their jaw, double checking the width there. I'm pretty accurate there. So I like to go back and forth and double check my shapes. Noticing how that jaw kind of continues up. Now let's add our eye. Notice where it is. It's below the ear and to the left of the horn. So I kind of place that looking at those angles and alignments. Their eye is pretty small. They don't have a really great vision. They use their sense of hearing and smell a lot more. They have a lot of wrinkles around their eye. Gets more realistic. I'm gonna double check my width of my head. Good, I got it. Cleaning up a little bit. Now remember, if we're going too fast for you, you can always watch the replay and slow it down or stop at any time you want to. So I was just cleaning that up a bit.
Now we're going to add more details later, but let's move on to the shoulder and the front legs. So look at that big withers and the big strong shoulder. So those are the withers, like a horse, coming down to the big strong uh, shoulder, noticing just how long that is, how wide that is. Because this guy is facing towards us a little bit, so that body is going to be foreshortened and wider. And that front leg is coming towards us and in front of the other leg. This rhino is slowly ambling towards us. Hopefully it won't run over us before we have a chance to finish up, right? Okay, so continuing on with those two front legs. Can you see I'm just continuing, I'm just drawing very lightly at first. Looking at the width of my leg, the length of my leg from that shoulder and elbow region. So the elbow is where that big um, wrinkle of skin is right there, right there. So it's kind of hidden under that thick, inch thick skin, it protects them. And then remembering there are um, bones in here and joints. So don't just draw, you know, a straight line. Notice that it comes in and out just like our legs and knees and ankles. And we got the three toes of that front leg. Well, front arm, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and we've got the, uh, basically, it's actually the wrist there coming up and we're going to get that other front leg noticing that negative shape that's going to separate the two legs from each other visually first we want to finish up the neck it's quite in shadow but there's some wrinkles in there and I'm just going to add there And then that big front leg, a very strong forearm, and then it gets kind of skinny, almost tucks back behind that other leg, see? And then just really the toe is, is facing, um, is showing really, that middle toe of the animal's right leg, right arm. <laughs> and then drawing the negative shape there. And just cleaning things up a bit. We're going to want to put more emphasis on that front leg later. So now we're going to move on to the belly, the big belly. And you can kind of see the lines of the ribs. Noticing how wide it is. So I'm making a little bit of marking there. And it's a big and round oval coming from the, uh, coming from the, below the withers. Making them big and fat. Noticing how wide that belly is. And I was making it a little bit too skinny. So it's always good to double check your proportions. Referring back to your photograph. I'm just going to strengthen that line on the back and make it a little bit lighter where it overlaps the hips and then a little bit darker where the belly is free and in shadow also. Now we're going to add those bumps there. Those are part of the hips. So that's the last part, the hips and the rump. And there's two bumps there. So those are bumps of the hip, just like your hip if you put your left and right hand down on below your your belly you could feel them and then the big muscular rear legs these guys can actually run pretty fast up to 25 miles an hour so they get really muscular hips And we're making those back legs, again, shorter than the front legs, not because they're shorter in real life, 
but because they visually are shorter because they're farther away from us and notice they're a little tiny bit higher on the paper. And those little tricks of drawing help to make this rhinoceros look like it's ambling towards us and not just going to the left or the right like our first gesture sketches we were doing. Okay, so this, this um, rear leg is in front of the other leg, just like the front leg was in front. And we see the middle toe and a little bit of the smaller side toes. Oh, hi, Joji. Thanks for joining us from Arizona. Now getting that back leg, noticing that tiny little negative shape there between the, the two legs there. There we go. Now I'm double checking here. I'm noticing something funny. I've got my, I'm, I'm a little bit off here. I think I've got my belly either too long or something, but I am just gonna, I'm not gonna make it as close. I'm gonna stop this here. So you see, um, where am I here? You see, this is a little triangle here. And you see there's hardly um, any room visually between this front leg and the back leg. But I think I made my front leg a little bit too far to the left. So um, I'm not going to stretch it at this point. Um, so I'm not going to um, force it to be something it's not. So I'm just going to move this leg back a little bit. So that's okay. Jay says, is the hip touching the belly? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but, um, you know, the, the hip bones are here and, um, you know, it kind of gets fuzzy here because of the light. So it's kind of hard to tell. So just look at those negative shapes instead as you're drawing. Um, but the big belly is overlapping a lot of the hip and the rump because this animal is ambling towards us. No, Jay says, sorry, the knee. Is the hip touching the knee? Um, okay, so the knee, the knee, um, the knee is hidden right here. Um, this is the ankle, okay? And the knee is hidden behind the big belly. Okay, let's keep going. So I just wanted to point that out that um, I didn't want to stretch my back leg and make it fake. So I'm just going with the flow. But I definitely could have had that front leg farther to the right, and then that would have been a little better. So see, if I double check here, you see my, um, oh, maybe I will fix it a little bit because <laughs> it's driving me crazy. So I'm going to make that front shoulder uh, a little bit more muscular, and then that'll help me to match my photo a bit more. And we've got that big shadowed wrinkle. The greater one-horned rhino that we've drawn before is really cool. It has sort of more armored plating that has more of those uh, lines there. But anyway, we are sketching this guy. Okay. How are we all doing now? I am, I'm moving on to my shading pencil. Now, don't worry if you don't have that. Um, just use whatever you have. Again, the, the idea here today is not to make a perfectly beautiful sketch, but to spend more time observing our species so that we really understand its anatomy and we're able to um, identify it in the field or if we're lucky enough to see one uh, in a zoo. Okay, so anyway, I've switched to my darker pencil. This is a 6B shading pencil, um, but no worries. Just use whatever you can. You can still shade with whatever else you have. So I'm getting that little ears. The ears do have a little bit of hair at their tips. <laughs> now I'm shading the shady part of the inside of my ear. And I'm using my pencil on the side a little bit to be able to add some more graphite. You see the coloration is really blotchy. 
Uh, it kind of goes from, you know, gray to kind of ochre to umber to black. And so there's a lot of different wrinkles. So don't worry, you don't have to be exact. Now I'm using this little smudging tool, but you could always use a um, Q-tip to blend or even your finger. But I'm using this to blend my values a little bit because none of this um, none of this rhinoceros is as white as the paper behind it. So I'm just going to demonstrate the head. I'm not going to do this whole guy. This would take a long time. But I am just looking back and forth at my specimen and noticing just all those different crazy shadows and lines and wrinkles. You know, every single rhinoceros is going to look different, especially if they're older. I noticed my mouth wasn't long enough, so I'm, I'm giving him a longer mouth so he can actually open his mouth and bra graze or browse. Remember, this black rhino species is a browser that lives a little bit more in the edge of the savannas amongst the shrubs and the trees compared to the white rhino. So your rhino could totally look different because every one of them looks different, just like we look different, especially as we age. We all get different wrinkles depending on how much uh, sun we've been in or how uh, much stress we've had in our lives. So every rhinoceros is going to look different if they've, if they've been in a lot of fights or been injured in other ways. So here I am again using my the side of my shading pencil to get more graphite down faster. Noticing how deeply in shadow that other leg is there. And then I'll use the point to help me really get a lot down um, really darkly, getting that shadowed wrinkle on the forearm and noticing the the leg they're not it's not equally shadowed. Kind of imagine the the sun beaming down on this uh, rhinoceros. It looks like the sun is coming from the kind of upper left. Maybe it's about 10 in the morning. So just noticing really closely where those shadows are. So they're not going to be, it's not going to be all the same amount of darkness or value as we say in the art, as an art terminology. Value means how dark or light. So we've got some really dark values under the jaw there and in the shadow of the belly. And then we've got a lot of light on top of the body. So I'm pressing down harder with my pencil point. The more you can get a range of darks and lights in, in your drawing, the more realistic your drawing will look. And usually if I'm out in the field sketching, I'll get that first outline in the field. And if I'm lucky, maybe take some photographs. And then when I'm back um, at the lodge, I will spend more time doing some shadowing like I am here to make it look more uh, three-dimensional. Now remember your homework, if you choose to accept it, is to draw the rhinoceros on the left, and you can also redraw the white rhinos on page two of your handout and um, do those in the same slower, more accurate technique um, as we're doing this one. So that's your extra credit homework. You always want to keep looking back and forth at all those wrinkles and lines and shadows. And you can spend as long as you want on this. Everybody draws different speeds. 
But imagining that three-dimensional structure, imagining that skeleton I showed you before, so you understand where the shadows are and where the joints are that bend. Using that blending stomp. Again, you can use a Q-tip or your finger. So there's my example from working on him about probably, probably a half hour longer. Okay. So um, one thing you can do that can really help you to see all those shadows is to turn your sketch upside down and actually draw like this. <laughs> draw like this. And you can see these shadows much better because it switches your mind from um, your left brain to your right brain. And your brain stops naming structures and it starts forcing um, your brain to really look to help it identify because it's a little bit frustrating for your brain, but it's really helpful for drawing and really seeing. You can see how deep those shadows are. They're a lot deeper than my graphite pencil could actually go, right? So um, that really helps to turn your sketch upside down. Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining me today on World Rhino Day. I hope you learned a lot about um, rhinos, especially the two species of African rhinos. And I hope you enjoy doing gesture sketches of them and doing the longer shaded pencil sketch of them. And I really hope you'll uh, join me uh, inside my Sketching Mammals of the World course or join me with my free uh, weekly sketching tips. Those are great no matter how old you are. Okay, I gotta get going. I hope you learned a lot about rhinoceros today and I hope you really enjoyed today's workshop. So have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend and take care um, and I'll see you again soon. Ciao.